Hi, dear Thriver. Today, I wanna to share with you five destructive narcissistic triangulation tactics so that you can spot them and avoid being abused with them. Okay, so let's just jump straight in. What is triangulation? Triangulation is bringing a third party into any relationship dynamic so that a narcissist can gain dominance and control. So commonly, you may wanna think of this as divide and conquer. There is very limited and maybe no contact between the triangulated people. So that means that the narrative and the conversation takes place between people via the narcissist. Now this keeps people at odds with each other rather than them understanding that the source of toxicity and abuse is coming from the narcissist. Triangulation can be very hard to spot. It's very insidious and it can be very painful to experience. So let's look at these five destructive narcissistic tactics that narcissists use, starting with number one, playing people off against each other. The narcissist simply may tell someone how this person, the other person, is so much better than them. It can be done covertly in indirect ways or even overtly stated, just as I expressed it here, such as this person does this better than what you do. Now, this is designed to make the target feel like they're not good enough, that they have to do better to earn the narcissist's approval, or that they are at threat of losing the narcissist's fidelity in a romantic relationship because they start fearing somebody else or they may fear that they're gonna lose the loyalty within a friendship group because the narcissist is sidling up to somebody else as a friend more than them, or you could be in fear of losing a position or a promotion in a workplace, or love in a family dynamic. So some examples are the narcissist making comments about how great somebody at work looks, or I love the way he or she dresses or looks, and maybe in an intimate relationship with you, they're making disparaging comments about your attire or your looks. So you think that this person that the narcissist is talking about, that they could leave you and go to that person. The narcissist could tell you gushingly what a wonderful friend this other person is to them. Or they may tell, and they may tell you within this friendship circle that they're making plans with this friend rather than you to purposely make you feel left out. A narcissistic boss or a team leader may tell you how incredible another team member is or how they will go above the call of duty in ways that you don't so that you start giving more for less because of your fear of loss of your position in the business. Within a family, it's common for one child to be the scapegoat and forever being told how wonderful the golden child is and how they can't match up to them. And usually the sensitive, kinder, scapegoated child is the one that the narcissistic parent exploits for years, even decades, because it's this child that's trying to finally earn their parents' approval. Narcissists, when triangulating, triangulating, they may play off both people or more against each other. So it could even be the story that you're hearing about not being good enough is the story the other person's hearing as well, because this keeps people focused on trying to please the narcissist and giving the narcissist more, losing their self-esteem and their inner healthy boundaries. And that allows the narcissist control and they can be siphoning out people more and more and more for their own self-serving benefit. Okay, so number two is the idolize and devalue switch. This is a more aggressive triangulation campaign and it's deeply toxic and destructive. And this is where the narcissist will idolize a person, then devalue them, and we'll have somebody else that they're devaluing and idolizing as well as the mirror image. So when one's devalued, devalued, the other is idolized and vice versa. 
The most common time this is used is in romantic relationships. So let me give you this simple example. The narcissist leaves a current partner who they devalue and then takes up with a new partner who's idolized and put on a pedestal. The new partner may do something that the narcissist perceives as wrong and then he or she is devalued and the old partner is picked up again and idolized. This is a very broken, twisted, immature and pathologically self-serving narcissistic tactic that sadly is very common. It's used to punish people covertly in that this may be being hidden from you, especially if the narcissist knows that you wouldn't tolerate being cheated on and it would be the end of you being in their life forever. Or it could be done overtly, even flung in your face with full-blooded callousness, telling you about the other person and that they've gone off to be with them. If the narcissist knows that you will stay around even after knowing that this is happening, by having such drama surrounded by broken-hearted people warring for the narcissist's attention, the narcissist gains powerful narcissistic supply. It's such an ego boost to their significance. And to get such potent narcissistic supply, the narcissist may even lie about perceived difficulties with the other person. So for example, he or she may simply say to the new partner, I have to go away from work and I'll be staying overnight in this location. And then they could come into your bed as the old partner telling you how things are not working out with the new person and that they've made a terrible mistake and they love you and they wanna get back with you. And then you discover after having sex with them and reconnecting that you get discarded and thrown away yet again. And of course, the narcissist will find some justification for this that degrades and destroys you further. With the idolize and devalue switch, both parties may not be aware this is happening with the other person, yet they will usually suspect and feel that there's something wrong. And you do, you feel it in your gut. A hint could be that they regularly talk about this person. The narcissist will be, bring this person up and your gut will be churning because your intuition is warning you this is going on. All one or both parties may be fully aware and are shockingly hooked into the trauma and the drama and feel like they can't break free from it and the narcissist is demonizing both people to each other and you blame them without realizing that the narcissist is playing everybody involved. Shocking. Okay, so number three, inappropriate relationships. Narcissists can have an inappropriate relationship that threatens their relationship with you. So this could be like a best friend and usually it's like of the sex that competes with you romantically. And this person is their go-to when they've got troubles or times of need or even when you have an argument with the narcissist. Maybe their best friend was a past lover or maybe they've met up with this person and started this best friend after being in a relationship with you. So this is a person that they spend a lot of time with and maybe they even go to events with them or do some traveling with them or share these certain interests with them. Okay, and it's incredibly painful for you to experience this. An inappropriate relationship is very confusing for you because you may believe that you're a reasonable person and you're not jealous or paranoid, but yet there's something that feels really off about this relationship. And if you speak up to the narcissist and express your concerns, the narcissist will accuse you of being jealous and paranoid and controlling. And it's really confusing because you feel torn between honoring your boundaries and knowing something feels off. And also too, you may feel like 
I've got this wrong and there is something wrong with me and you're trying to prove to the narcissist that you're not this insecure, paranoid, inappropriate person. And maybe this isn't even a friendship. It could be a relationship that a narcissist has with their sibling or even a parent. And this person seems to be their ultimate person and is used against you with examples or brought up in conversations often and you kind of wonder who they're having a relationship with. Because understandably, this is going to leave you feeling unimportant, insignificant and replaced. And you may start to suspect there's more going on with this relationship than meets the eye. And it has come to pass in many people's lives that these were actually sexual relationships or at the very least emotional infidelity going on with this so-called just friendship. Who is the third wheel in your relationship? Number four, triangulation tactic. Allies, real or imagined. Commonly in arguments with a narcissist, they'll quote a third party who apparently agrees with the narcissist's degradation of you. So they'll say things like, your work colleagues have told me that you're selfish and you don't care about other people in your team. Or I know from people in your past that you've been caught out cheating on them. Or so-and-so confided in me that they also believe and they're really concerned that you've got serious mental issues. Now, because you're a good person and you're not used to this, you can't imagine that people would purposefully lie about such things or that they're capable of feeding people so much of their own twisted versions, effectively turning people against you, that these people have started agreeing with the narcissist. And they have said some things about you that the narcissist is quoting or embellishing. So when this happens to you, this triggers intense shame and pain within you, all designed to diminish you and control you. And the narcissist is banking on you not discovering the truth about this. So they'll either refuse to give you the source. They'll say something like, I gave this person my word. I wouldn't tell you that they said this. And because you're a good person, you think, well, that's honourable. Or they might say who it is who said it if they feel like you would never get the guts to ask them. This triangulation tactic, allies real or imagined, is especially used when you try to hold the narcissist accountable for their wrongdoings. And I'm sure you've experienced it because it's pretty common. Number five tactic, using children against you. Our last devastating triangulation technique is setting your children against you. And this can be employed even when you're still living under the same roof with the narcissist, but it's especially used after separating with a narcissist. And in this case, the narcissist doesn't speak directly to you, but tries to control communication through the children. So as an example, the narcissist will say awful things about you to your child, have the child deliver you this narrative in order to degrade anger and hurt you. And then the narcissist will make out to the child that they're the good parent, that they can come to them for attention and the things that they want, things that you as the bad parent won't supply them with. The narcissist may even tell the child that certain information about you and what you've done is a secret and not to share it with you. Or tell them that you're going to deny it and you're going to pretend that the narcissist did it. So they're trying to get ahead of your reaction to make the child distrust you and start pulling back from you. And naturally, of course, when you hear this stuff, you get triggered. And then this does cause your child to retract even further. And tragically, this can even lead to the child being alienated away from you. And of course, it's disgraceful. 
using children as pawns in the game to hurt you, yet narcissists do this. They do it without conscience and they do it regardless of the effect that it has on the children. Okay, so true solutions to triangulation. There's only one way to deal with triangulation is detaching and inner healing. They're essential ingredients because if you're triggered, which of course you are, it's all designed to trigger you. You become emotionally involved. You participate in the toxic triangle, which is exactly where the narcissist wants you to be. And you're trying to bring sense and sanity to it. You're trying to sort it out, but it only feeds it. It only makes it worse. There is no possibility of you sorting it out if you're hooked into what the narcissist is doing. Rather, you need to create a parallel reality. And we do this from the inside out. So by turning in and by releasing your fears of traumas of not being good enough, feeling dependent on a certain person for love, approval, security and survival, which is a narcissist, and fearing loss, loss of love or the relationship or the kids or the friendship or whatever it is, what happens then when you lose the dependency and the loss from the inner healing, you get in touch with your own truths, values and limits and align with them no matter what somebody else does or doesn't do. You will leave this lover trying to control you through trying to trigger your insecurities. You can generate a healthier job where you are appreciated and don't have people pitted against you to exploit you or diminish your worth. And you don't play these games with friendships and family anymore. And that way you can be free to create your own healthy relationships and realities. And it takes time, it takes healing, but it definitely comes because you will start to be able to recognize abuse break away when you see it and no longer stay attached trying to fix an unhealthy other who is triangulating you and realize that healthy relationships don't feel like this. They don't go like this. And if a narcissist is trying to twist and turn your child, you can detach from that, not feed it heal you, don't get caught up in trying to justify yourself and just become your true self where your, the truth just starts to unravel and it does express itself and it heals regardless of what anybody throws at you and your children. Please know triangulation is one of the narcissist's favorite tactics. It gets them big bang for buck. It's a really great way to control people and they all do it. They all do it. I hope that today has helped you recognize when and how you're being triangulated and how abusive this is. And you're not going crazy. It is happening. And if you know you want power, clarity and strength to pull away and heal and never have to experience these narcissistic tactics again, then I can't recommend enough checking out NARP. The link is in the show notes because it delivers you out of this torment directly and powerfully. Okay, so until the next one, keep smiling, keep healing, keep thriving, and remember to subscribe and like my videos and share if this could help somebody. Lots of love. Bye-bye.